statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your uh, dedicated work on this issue. Uh, thank you for having this follow-up hearing as promised. In a lot of recent events, uh, the trip you led to Iraq uh, a few months back, and the scheduled departure of U.S. military in just a few short weeks, this hearing provides a timely opportunity for us to once again assess not only the precarious humanitarian situation at Camp Ashraf, but also to consider the broader issues of U.S.-Iraq policy going forward. Uh, I'm fortunate to represent uh, an active Iranian-American community uh, back home in St. Louis who care deeply about family members and residents at Camp Ashraf. I'm glad to have uh, some of them here today. Welcome again and thank you. Uh, for your advocacy uh, in uh, being part of uh, this effort. In 2003, the residents of Camp Ashraf were granted protected status under the Geneva Convention. Pursuant to the Status of Forces Agreement between the U.S. and the Iraqi governments, however, jurisdiction of the camp has been under Iraqi jurisdiction since 2009. With the drawdown of U.S. forces in Iraq, and the Iraqi government's repeated calls for the residents to leave Iraq, there is a serious concern about the safety and welfare of the residents. The safety of residents at Camp Ashraf poses immediate concern, but I'm also interested to hear what our continued efforts in the country will look like. I look forward to the hearing today. Again, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for uh, your continued efforts to champion uh, a, a humanitarian solution uh, for uh, this issue. Uh, we now would like to call on uh, Representative Chabot, Chairman of the Middle East and South Asian Subcommittee, uh, who is the uh, uh, officially the uh, uh, co-sponsor or, or co-chairing this event, and we appreciate hearing from your opening statement, Mr. Chabot. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Uh, let me uh, begin by thanking my colleague, the gentleman from California, the Chairman of the Subcommittee on Oversight, and investigations, Mr. Rohrbacher, for uh, calling this timely and important uh, joint hearing with the subcommittee on the Middle East and South Asia uh, that I happen to chair. Um, in January of 2009, the Iraqi government took the sovereign control of Camp uh, Ashraf and responsibility for the 3,400 residents living in it. Uh, since then, there have been several extremely disturbing incidents, one of which we just saw which resulted in the deaths of Camp Ashraf residents. I'm particularly disturbed by the deaths of as many as 35 residents of Camp uh, Ashraf resulting from the clashes with Iraqi forces on April 8, 2011. Again, well, I guess that was this, this, this was the same one as that, yes. Reports of uh, shortages of food, fuel, and medical supplies are also very concerning. Uh, this is simply unacceptable. The Iraqi government must take all necessary and appropriate steps to prevent the loss of life. As we work to resolve this situation, however, it is incumbent on all parties to remember that the 3,400 residents are not just words on a page, but people, human beings. The status of the residents of Camp Ashraf is a complex issue and one that requires an international solution, which takes into account the desires of the actual residents. Correspondingly, I'd like to echo recent calls to push back, by, uh, push back the December 31st deadline to close Camp Ashraf. I fear that trying to rush a solution only risks further harm to the camp residents. Although permanent homes for these residents will certainly take time to find, and as such patience will be required on the port, part of all concerned parties, it is critical that the international community understand the urgency of the situation and proceed expeditiously. I want to again thank Chairman Rohrbacher for calling this hearing. I look forward to hearing the testimony of the witnesses, and I yield back my time. Uh, I would now like to recognize Congressman Poe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> we have a crisis that is taking place halfway around the world. And the United States should be aware of this crisis and impending deadline. Now, why would the Iraqi government want to close down a camp and just move them to another camp in Iraq? 
Well, because the Iraqi government knows that the phrase Camp Asheroff is known throughout the world as a place of refuge for Iranian freedom fighters. Iraq knows if it attacks the residents while they're in Camp Asheroff, it will face worldwide condemnation like it did in 2000 and 2000, 2009 and 2011 when they massacred over 40 unarmed civilians. The residents of Camp Ashraf said they don't trust the Iraqi government. I don't blame them. They've invaded their camp twice. The residents of Camp Ashraf have applied to be recognized as political refugees by the United Nations. Iraq knows that if the residents get refugee status, they won't be able to violate their human rights without more serious consequences. So with strong pressure from the Iranians, Maliki and his thugs are closing the camp on December the 31st before the UN refugee process can finish. On December 12th, Maliki will be in the United States. He'll be in Washington, D.C. I'm gathering a letter with signatures to the president urging him to raise the Camp Asheroff issue during this meeting. We have 47 signatures. We hope to have more. The clock is ticking. The days are numbered. I hope the witnesses today can exactly outline specifically what will be done by this administration to protect the residents of Camp Asheroff. I hope we don't hear, as in my opinion we've heard in the past, more comments about why our government continues to side with the Maliki government and the interest of Iran over the freedom fighters in Camp Asheroff. And I yield back. Uh, Congressman Rivera, please, uh, with your opening statement, and then our two guests okay. will be permitted to have opening okay. statements as well. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I, and I will adhere to your uh, two-minute uh, admonition as well. My main question that I would like answered uh, during this hearing, Mr. Chairman, uh, particularly from uh, Ambassador Freed, is this issue of the arbitrary December 31st deadline. And what is the United States doing to avoid what can only be referred to as a New Year's Eve massacre occurring at Camp uh, Ashraf because we know what's coming. In the case, in this particular case, the past is prologue. We've seen previously psychological torture around the camp, utilizing noise making mechanisms to try and provide a, 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 an ambiance of torture, what can only be described as torture for the residents there, physical deprivation. We saw the videotape at the beginning of this, of this hearing. We know what's coming. What is the United States doing to avoid that massacre that we know is coming? The December 31st deadline, I believe, is simply a pretense to carry out the forced repatriation of these residents. Forced repatriation to brutality, to torture, and to an environment of death. So we must do all in our power to avoid this New Year's Eve massacre. And I want to know, and I hope this hearing will shed light and provide answers to this important question. And I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. But Mr. Filner, would you uh, like to proceed with an opening statement? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the, uh, the honor of being part of the committee today. Uh, what is happening, by the way, rare in committee meetings that are going on around the Hill today, and I hope Ambassador Mrs. Leaf, you will report this back to Mrs. Clinton. I mean, usually you see the two sides just fighting each other rather than coming to any uh, agreement or consensus, and I think we are all together on this item, and I appreciate the Chairman's leadership on it. Uh, I would associate myself, God may strike me down for this, but with all the remarks that uh, Chairman Rohrbacher said, uh, and uh, rather than try to interrupt uh, Ambassador Freed's testimony because I was a little upset by it, I'll just say some things now about it. I found your, your testimony a little bit troubling. Uh, you start out by saying a common understanding of the facts is important. I agree with you. I'm not sure your, 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 uh, your statement has led to that or helped us toward that common understanding. Uh, and in fact, I have heard the first Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary Ridge, say publicly that no nothing ever crossed his desk as Secretary of Homeland Security which showed MEK to be anything of a terrorist organization. The Attorney General, Mukasey, said the exact same thing. He never saw anything uh, about that. The Chief of Staff of the President of the United States, Andrew Card, said the exact same thing. They never saw anything that, in their judgment, would lead to the thinking of the MEK as a terrorist organization. 
So all of that facts on one side are, is just at least arguable, if not false. So uh, I, I, I find it strange that you're going to try to, uh, and I could say this, but I have a PhD in history, so I'm allowed to say it's historically inaccurate. Uh, so please, let us, let us uh, try to be factual here. Let us try to look at, as my colleague said earlier, this is a group of people who support our policy against Iran, that they want, as we want, a democratic, secular, non-nuclear Iran. I want to know from you, Mr. Ambassador, what are we going to do to help them survive? We know the problems. Let's find a place for the refuge. Let's protect them if necessary. You left five or ten troops in there. That's, that's not very many. Leave five or ten. I bet you that changes the whole situation. Get the, get, put a resolution at the Security Council saying the UN troops should be there to protect Ashraf. That's not easy to do. But let's show where the United States stands on this stuff. Take some leadership. Show some aggressiveness. Don't just give us bureaucratic stuff that says, oh, the place is so difficult, it's so complex, we got all these problems, I'm not sure we can do anything by December 31st. That's baloney. We can. Show some leadership. Show some, uh, don't be so timid. Show that we care about a, uh, 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 that this is the most critical place in, in the world. And we want to change in Iran, and we should be doing everything we can to help make that true. Thank you. Thank you. And Congresswoman Chu, do you have a... Thank you so much. Well, I was elected in 2009, and my time here feels like it's been marked by events at Camp Ashraf. It was then that residents in the camp suffered their first bloody attack at the hands of Iraqi forces, where 11 were killed and over 300 injured. Hundreds of armed security forces used bulldozers to force their way into the camp. They used tear gas, water cannons, and batons against unarmed residents who tried to stop them from entering. Okay. I was even more horrified to see the full videotape of the events of April 2011. Iraqi forces were shooting at unarmed women, men, and children. 34 people were killed and over 320 residents injured. I could not believe the way in which soldiers shot indiscriminately at people as though they were just uh, objects uh, that they were looking at through target practice. I'm here today to be a, a voice for the families who worry about their loved ones. The U.S. will leave Iraq at the end of the year on the same timeline that President Maliki is planning to close Camp Ashraf. Once U.S. forces leave, there will be no way to protect these residents. After these two attacks, and with Iraqi forces continuing to surround these camps, I cannot have it on my conscience or the conscience of the United States for these 3,400 residents to be harmed when we could have stopped it. I believe that the State Department and the President should use its position and influence to extend the December 31st deadline for the closure of Camp Ashraf, that we should push the Iraqi government not to relocate Camp Ashraf residents to places all over inside Iraq. And we need to urge the Iraqi government to allow the UN High Commission for Refugees to do its work in helping the residents of Camp Ashraf find a safe place to go. That is the least that they deserve. Thank you very much, uh, and let me just make one correction uh, for my colleague. Uh, that was not indiscriminate shooting. That was uh, worse. That was very discriminate. That was very pointed and very aimed shooting at the specific individuals who were murdered that day, including women and, uh, and minors who were unarmed. They were targeted. They went through the sights. It wasn't just somebody shooting into the air and accidentally hitting somebody. This is premeditated murder. And that's one of the reasons that we're here today.